Well, happy day. I hope you're doing good. Going to do something I haven't done on this channel in a while. I've just been so in my head and so logical that I haven't really mm, been able to dance a little bit. You know what I mean? Speaking metaphorically, of course, I love incense and I've been able to burn incense on camera or really, really even off camera in a while. I think I really, I lost, I lost the flow a little bit. Okay. So got some incense burning. We'll let that burn as we, as we discuss today. What's the best way to frame that? I guess that's fine. Well, I've been drawn back into some untethered soul ideas recently. So I want to lead us through a quick just kind of meditation today on some of these words and some of these thoughts by Michael Singer. Uh, once again, this this deck of cards are all you know based on the book written by Michael Singer called The Untethered Soul. And the book is basically, a, I think, a spiritual approach to a, a, more, maybe a, a, a really spiritual approach to um, theology, because um, all, all theology is, is the study and the talking of talking about God. Theology is studying and talking about God. So Michael Singer is not a Christian theologian. I think he tries to be multi, multi-religious, multi, um, in I don't know. I'm trying to think of the words. The words are not coming to me for whatever reasons. But Michael Singer is just, his thoughts are important. I think they're powerful. And so we'll just go through some of these together and um, get blessed by some of his his thoughts. So um, I'll do what I did last couple of videos. And, and they all look the same on the outside, but they're different. So I'll just have you pick one or two, and then we'll just kind of go from there. I might pick a total of about five today. The first one is freeing yourself. It might be hard to see. I might be, my light might be too bright. I may have to adjust this. Let me adjust this really quick. It might be too low. Okay. But you can see that better probably. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, it's called freeing yourself. And he says, Fear is a thing, it's just another object in the universe that you are capable of experiencing. And I like what he's trying to do. What he's trying to do is really just, you know, give us a, a, a maybe a healthier perspective on some of these things that we experience in our reality. Like fear, for many people, fear prevents them from doing so much, from living, from exploring, from growing. And so what Michael Singer is trying to do is just trying to help us to look at fear as just an object. It's just an object. It's a helpful object because I need fear to, to live and survive. If I didn't have fear, you know, I would just jump off of a cliff without thinking, right? But fear, it, it keeps me alive, but sometimes it can keep me from living too. So as I'm trying to objectify fear and just kind of look at it as an object in my life that I can experience, I think I'm able to live a healthier life and a more freeing life and not just be rigid and stuck, which is why this card is called freeing yourself. So today, remember that fear is just a thing. It's just another thing that you can experience just like disappointment or shame or embarrassment. I think I, I need to hear embarrassment because I'm often embarrassed by stuff that I've said or done, but I'm reminded by thoughts like this that that's just an object. It's just a thing. Yeah, I experience embarrassment. Okay, maybe I can learn from this embarrassment. Embarrassment. Maybe I can harness some of what I felt and make sure that I don't do something like I just did to feel that again, right? But it's just something that I can experience and move on from. I think he does that really well with a lot of emotions that he talks about. All right, let's pick a, another card. Let's see. Okay, you said this one, so we'll go with this one. I hate that they're all the same color on the outside. Another freeing yourself. Mm, okay. He says, when your stuff gets hit, let go right then because it will be harder later. Mm. So one of the things he tries to argue all throughout the book is that we are more than our emotions, our thoughts, 
even our body. He, he says that we are above all the, the silent observer of our reality. I think this is important. And I don't think it's like getting into some Gnosticism because I think that can be dangerous. He's not trying to say that all that matters in our life is our spirit and our soul and our ability to watch and observe. He's not saying that. I think what he's saying is for us to properly enjoy our bodies or our hearts or our minds or our embodied reality, we have to take the observer seat and don't let our emotions control us or don't let our body's uh, urges control us. Don't let our our fears control us and our, our ideology control us. Uh, um, we use these things to to serve us and to serve the world around us. And I think it's really healthy that he says that throughout the book. But, but this, this particular call, he, card, he says, when your stuff gets hit, let go right then and there because it will be harder later. So when he says stuff, it's like, whatever you say is yours. So I might say that this incense is mine. So if I'm too attached to that incense and you come up and you knock it off, you just knock it off and it just goes on the floor and then I got to burn another incense, right? If I'm really attached to that, that's really going to bother me. I mean, really going to bother me if I'm overly attached to that. Meanwhile, like if I'm not as attached to my stuff, this can get hit and I can say, okay, I got another couple of incense in the back. It's not a big deal, right? And I can I can let go right then and there. I think it's good to let go right then and there because the harder I'm you know, holding on to my stuff, the harder it is to to let it go later or to know how to respond when it gets hit later. So what he's trying to argue is like, just have a loose grip on your stuff. And this is incense. This is your your thoughts, your your body. I mean, just don't take yourself so seriously. Like, and I think this is this is important. It is not that, once again, we're not just saying that this stuff is not important. Like my body is important, my incense is important. It's, it's important to me, right? So I'm I'm not saying that I'm I'm disregarding this as valuable, but what I'm saying is I'm more than this. And so if this gets hit, I'll be okay. Like this is a posture he's trying to take and trying to encourage us to take. All right, let's see what else we got. We'll probably do at least three more. I'm already feeling more grounded and more aware. Some of these are backwards, so let's go ahead and do this one. Hopefully this one's a little better. Well, not that these have not been good. I'm just just saying this one's called experiencing energy. What I meant to say, not better, but different because all these, these other two were freeing yourself. So he also talks about energy and I love this. This is where I got a lot of my ideas about energy and spirituality and the connections. He likes to say that God is energy. Like God is the force behind all living reality that sustains it and moves it. And I think that that's an important metaphor. And it's just a metaphor because I can't capture who God is in one metaphor, right? But I think this is a helpful metaphor. He says, when you feel pain, simply view it as energy. Let go and give room for the pain to pass through you. I think this is important. It's similar to the freeing itself that we've just read a couple minutes ago, but pain is energy. And it doesn't feel good. I'm not saying that it's like, oh, I'm not trying to minimize your pain. But what I'm trying to do is, what he's trying to do is help us to be free from our pain and have the and have the reminder that we are empowered to let go of our pain. Like we don't have to be controlled by our pain. I don't have to be controlled by the pain that I, I experience in my life. I still am going to address it. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to do something about it, but I'm not going to let it control my life. And I think this is what he's trying to get at. Don't let the pain control you. Give it room to be within you, but also let it pass through you. So after you address it, let it go, let it pass through you so that you can be grounded again and be, be appreciative and grateful for your reality and your life again. Helpful stuff, loving it. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shuffle this a couple of times. I'm not a good shuffler, especially with cars like this, they're so big. And I'm gonna flip them. So you'll be able to see the colors now, right? So let's see, what do you want? What do you want? I think somebody said this one right here. So we're gonna do this one. I think this is also experiencing energy. Yep, experiencing energy. Energy doesn't get old. It doesn't get tired and it doesn't need food. 
What it needs is openness and receptivity. I think this is so, so crucial and so important, especially thinking about the energetic makeup of us. Um, I'm thinking about people in my life that are just a joy to be around. They have a lot of energy and it's good energy. I'm thinking about someone like my friend, Dave Pastor, who was on this channel a couple of weeks ago. He has a lot of energy. And it's important to know that energy doesn't get old because you can have energy, a lot of energy in your 50s, 60s, 70s. But if it's all about being open. I think what tends to happen as we age, I'm not an ex expert on this, I'm only 27, but I think what, what tends to happen as we age, we, we lock, lock up, we get closed, we get stagnant. We don't wanna move as much as we, we should, I think. And we just close our, our minds, our ideas, we, we get locked into who we are. And the key is just to stay open and continue to be surprised by, by life. And I think this this keeps energy in your life. This keeps energy in your mind and your heart. And I think this energy allows you to appreciate life more. So what he argues also throughout this book is the importance of staying open and receptive to your reality, open and receptive to life. And I think this is so important. This is the ideal of the untethered soul. The soul is not tethered to an idea or a an emotion or a particular bodily experience like it's open to these things but it's not like firmly attached to these things so that it's just stuck he's trying to help us not to be stuck i think these are some helpful helpful thoughts all right what we got we got four so let's do one more i think that'll be good for this video so i'm going to turn it around again and you can help me we can't just keep picking the bright ones okay so let's switch it up okay somebody said uh, it's kind of hard. Okay, yeah, let's just no, no, let's do this one. It's kind of hard for me to. Okay, yeah, somebody said this one. It's hard for me to see it when I'm flipping it and trying to. Yeah, it, I, I can't explain what I just tried to explain. Okay, going beyond, going beyond. This is a great way to end. I think going beyond. I can't tell if you can see that or not. These cars are so bright. He says you must go through the darkest night in order to get to the infinite light. Wow. What we call darkness is really the blockage of light. Mmm, this is so dense and so deep. The first thought I have is, you know, there, there is no darkness. Maybe there, maybe there is, I, I, mean, I'm not, I don't know this for sure, but it makes sense to me that maybe there is no darkness. Maybe all there is is light. And what we see as darkness is just the the blockage of that light getting in for whatever reason. I think light wants to be expanded and to grow and to, to go, but we can keep light from growing in our lives, being, being shown in our lives. And I think this is part of what the gospel message is all about. I think Jesus has come because in a lot of ways we have blocked the light as a humanity. And that's part of the human condition. We've blocked the light and it's been so dark. And Jesus has come to help us to see, not just that, show us who the Father is, show us who the Father of light is. And so that we can, I think, trust that light more and open ourselves to that light more and, and grow in that light. He tells his followers, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do the people light a light on a lamp stamp, something like that. Uh, no, they put it they put it somewhere else in the house so that everyone in the world or in the house can see it. And the same is true for you. Let, let your light shine before others that they may see God through you. Like this is the calling that Jesus gives his followers. And I think this is what Michael Singer is trying to get at too. Man, these are very, very helpful thoughts. And, um, you know, sometimes I have seen seasons in my life where I struggle with Michael Singer. And I think part of that is just, I'm not open. <laughs> I'm not open in my mind and my heart. And um, I think his thoughts are so freeing and so beautiful. And um, I think I struggle with them when I'm really in my head about them. And maybe the same could be true for you. So I highly encourage you to check out The Untethered Soul. It's a really good book. You might wanna check out these cards too. These cards were cheaper than the, the Gino cards I talk about. I talked about a couple weeks ago. I think these cars were like 20 bucks and something like that. So check those out. Uh, I thank you so much for watching. I pray God's blessings over your day and your life. And 
wherever you are, I pray that you may open yourself. You may open your heart and your mind to whatever is happening in your reality and trust that light is trying to be penetrated in your reality in some way and that there's a role that you can play in allowing that light to be expanded and to grow for the sake of love, for the sake of peace, for the sake of freedom. So um, so thank you again for watching. Um, I'm so grateful for this season of my life. I'm grateful to be able to create content and share it with you. Um, even if only a few few of you watch, because I think what I'm doing as I'm doing this, as I'm creating content, um, is helping me to grow. So it's it's beautiful that I get to share it with you, but it also I'm growing whether or not people watch or not. So I'm grateful to be able to create stuff like this and share it with you. So thank you for watching. Blessings to your day. Um, feel free to reach out to me, email me. My email is always in the description below. So email me, reach out to me if you have questions or would like to talk. I'm happy to be a friend for you. I'm happy to be a resource for you. Blessings to your day. Don't be fooled. This Jesus you've heard about is not who they say he is. He did not come to start wars and draw swords. He came to serve. He did not come to condemn sin. He came to heal and empower. He did not come to start a religion. He did not come to start a religion.